to your throne. Lord, we lift up before you at this time our prayer list, the list that we have garnered over the weeks, the many weeks in the past that has been growing and the new names on the list this morning. We're asking your intervention in whatever way that these persons stand in need. I pray in a special way that you will bring healing for those who are sick, comfort for those who are discouraged. May you bring hope and encouragement to the despairing. Provide for those who are in need. And oh God, we will not tell you what to do because you know best and let your will be done where these persons are concerned. We pray for Susa, Sister Terry's daughter, and her family. You know what her needs are. We pray in a special way for Sister Crystal, who had surgery and anticipating another. Uh, her family member, Sister Kimberly, who is suffering from ovarian cancer. We pray for Joan, who did surgery during the course of this week, had a stroke. We pray for Oret, Sister Lowe's neighbor, son. You know him, her mother, his mother is asking for your intervention on his behalf. He has turned 50 years old and still living without the hope of eternal life. I pray in a special way, God, that you will intervene. I pray for Corrine over there in St. Mary who lost her mother by accident, that you will be with them, that you will comfort them and their family. In a special way, God, we pray for the other names on the list who stand in need of your intervention at this time. Be with the members of this ministry and this, their families. I pray in a special way for those who are traveling that you'll give them mercies. And oh God, those who lead out on the program today, may you work through them through your Holy Spirit to lift up the name of Jesus and to bring your people closer to you. Take full control now, have your own way, and we give you glory and honor for hearing and for answering our prayers. Grant that we will submit to your will and we will give you all the praise you deserve. Thank you again for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. At this time, we'll go right into our inspiration, which will be done by Melrose Group. Um. All right, so since we're not at Melrose as yet, we are going to, my family will do the songs. We're going to take Far From Our Care, 394, or first hymn, 394. Far From All Care. Far from all care, we hear the Sabbath morning, all waving fields and from the distant sea. Swell notes of praise in harmony resounding as all creation turns her heart to thee. No man alone, Lord of thy great creation, fails now to Lord thee for thy love and power. Yet still a remnant, love thee and remember thy holy Lord and its sweet Sabbath. Lord of the Sabbath, Savior and Creator, come now the throbbings of the troubled rest. Speak to our hearts the peace of thy commandments. Breathe on each soul, fair Eden's hallowed rest. Strong in thy might and quiet in thy meekness, may we thine image bear from day to day. Then may we enter pearly gates eternal and sting redemption song each Sabbath day. Amen. 
next hymn is going to be number one, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who are all things so wondrously reigned. Shall there be under his wings, yea, so gently sustained? As thou not seen, how thy desires have been, granted in what he ordained. Praise to the Lord, who doth prosper thy works and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder and you what the Almighty can do if with his love he befriend thee. Amen. 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 Blessings. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Amen. and family, for that lovely singing. At this time, we'll have our scripture reading, followed by our prayer, which will be done by Sister Chantel Morris. Over to you, Sister Chantel. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, of course, the scripture reading will be taken from Amos 3, verses 1 to 3. So once you have found that, then we should be good to go. That's Amos 3, verses 1 to 3. And it reads, Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have one known, one, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Here is a portion of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, as we come before you, we just want to thank you, Lord, for today a wonderful day. You know, today is your day, Lord Jesus. You have sanctified it and set it apart, Lord Jesus, for us to come together unified, you know, worshiping you. Lord, even now we pray for unity in this congregation. Lord, we pray that this program will run smoothly, Lord Jesus, and that your word will dwell in our hearts, Lord Jesus, so that we may not sin against you. Lord, even now, we just want to thank you, Lord, for, you know, everything that you have done. Thank you for keeping us safe even now. Thank you for waking us up this morning, you know, to see another day, your holy day, Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us together, Lord, even now, so that we can, you know, worship together and be here in your presence. We just want to pray, Lord Jesus, for every single person who is on their way, <clears throat> Lord Jesus, and also persons who are here. Lord, we pray that you just continue to bless each and every one of us, protect our families, Lord Jesus, protect our going out and coming in. You know, Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are on the road right now. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to protect and guide them. Even though, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your day. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Chantel. Amen. Amen. 
God has bound our hearts to him by unnumbered tokens in heaven and in earth. Through the things of nature and the deep pest and tenderest earthly ties that human hearts can know, he has sought to reveal himself to us. Yet these but imperfectly represent his love. Though all these evidences have been given, the enemy of good blinded the minds of men, so that they looked upon God with fear. They thought of him as severe and unforgiving. Satan led men to conceive of God as a being whose chief attribute is stern justice. But who is a severe judge? A arch exacting, sorry, one, one who is a severe judge, a harsh exacting creditor. He pictured the creator as a being who is watching with jealous eye to discern the errors and mistakes of men, that he may visit judgments upon them. It was to remove this dark shadow by revealing to the world the infinite love of God that Jesus came to live among men. We have come to a very special moment in our worship. And this is the health focus. And this will be done by Sister Sasha Kane. Please give, let us give her our, uh, all, all our undivided attention. And may God and, the, and his Holy Spirit go through with her as we listen. And may we take down notes because sometimes plenty of these things that we pass, um, pass through through the health focuses on Sabbath, you know, it, we can, it can refer back to us in our lives and our home. So please listen attentively and take notes. Over to you, Sister Sasha. Sasha. Hi, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, one someone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, yes. Okay, all right. Um, before we begin, let us pray. Okay. Our kind and most righteous servant, the Father, we thank you for this, your holy Sabbath, dear first. We thank you for waking us up this morning in our right mind, and we thank you most importantly for such a beautiful day. We pray that as we're about to go into the health focus, that you have our hearts and mind in tune to your word, and that we be able to, to receive it and to impart it on others and to learn from it and do the same that which was said help us to take care of our bodies and to learn of it that you have given unto us through your son jesus name amen okay amen. all right so um the last time i presented on um the who remember student of the class. Okay, I'm unable to share a screen. Did it have something to do with psychology or something like that? No, sister, no, sister, no. <laughs> that was a long time ago. So it was a skeletal system. Right? Okay. Right. Okay, so um, can I share a screen now? We also save a part of the part screen sharing. Wait, I can read it. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, so for the last time, um, I'm not sure where we stop, but we can pick up and um, continue. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. It is a delay. What are you seeing on the screen now? Anatomy and physiology. 
the skeletal system orthopedics. All right, so we look at the different classification of bones. We have long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and these are the classification. Right. Um, I remember where we stopped. So let's just start here with the bones of the hips. Can you see that on the screen? Yes. I right, said so the pelvis includes the hip bones as well as the sacrum and the cossix of the vertebral column. The hip bones include the Pardon? Very low. Not, not if it's on my side. Yes, it's on your side, Sister Terry. I'm hearing her fine. Okay. The hip bones um, include the ilium and the ischium and the pubis on each side of the vertebral column. This is the most superior side of the hip bone, which has a broad fairing rim known as the iliac crest. I'll show a picture of this afterwards. Hold on. Eight. Posterior each um, ilium joins out to the sacrum. The ilium contains the deep socket of the hip joint, and the ischium is the most inferior of the hip bones. Each of these is one of the seat bones for we, what, that we sit on, on the two jaws, the bone that is there. The pubis or pubic bone is a small bridge-like bone. It is the most anterior to the hip bone. It is two halves meet in the midline where they form the pubic symphysis uh, nearly immobile joint that has a cartilage pad between the bone ends. The pubis also form the inferior part of the acetabulum. So there's a cartilage there because you know bone rubbing on bone that would be very painful and that would cause um, fractures. So there has to be a cartilage there like a soft um, area that where two joints are. So here we have it. This is the tailbone or the cossack at the very end of the, um, the vertebral column and it goes through the pelvis area. And that's what we call the tailbone. Right. There we have it. So the bone of the lower and upper leg, what Jamaicans call the foot. The lower mm -hmm. extremities consist of the upper leg or thigh and the lower leg. The femur or thigh bone is the long weight bearing bone in the upper leg. The head of the femur fits into the acetabulum to form the hip joint. Here, the tibia or shin bone is the large bone in the medial um, side of the lower leg. At its distal end, it has a bone prominence, um, bone prominence, sorry, that's as known as the medial malleus, malleus. 
malleolus. The fibula is the very thin bone on the lateral side of the lower leg. Right? It's, prominal, it's proximal and connects to the tibia, um, not to the femur, and it is not a weight bearing bone in the leg. Let me see. I think there is an image afterwards. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? So it's distal and has a bony prom prominence known as the lateral malleolus. And this is often mistakenly called ankle bones. Yes, there's that picture. I'm going to show it to you. The patella or kneecap is a thick round bone anterior to the knee joints. It is most prominent in thin people like myself and when the knee is partially bent. That's when you mostly see it. So the ankle contains seven tarsal bones. The talus is the first tarsal bone and the calcaneus or eel bone is the largest tarsal bone. The midfoot contains five metatarsal bones, one on each toe. So the instep, you know, that part at the bottom of the foot, or the heart of the foot contains both tarsal and metatarsal bone. Each toe or digit contains three phalangeal bones or phalanges, except the big toe which contains two. The distal phalanx is the very tip of the toe and the toes are also known as digits or rays. So that's what the toes are called in anatomy, digits or rays. The great toe or the big toe that we call it is also known as allop. So here we have it. Phalanges, metatarsals, and the um, calcaneus or the, the eel bone. So what we call the ankle bone is that little bony part at the bottom of our, at the end of our foot there. And we have one at each side. Right. So the one on the lateral side and the medial side it is towards. So sis. Yes, sis. Low. Now you mentioned I saw um about gray the great toe. Mm -hmm, big toe. The big. I, when you read in the scripture that they put the blood on the great toe, they don't say the big toe, don't it? It's just, we, I don't know why we call it Vito, I guess because it's bigger than the other ones. <laughs> Apparently. So when I see it in there and I'm like, the great toe. Why would they call it the great toe? So now they say explains it. Thank you. So here where we see a little, it's kind of looks, it kind of looks silverish on the stream. Where you see the knee joints, the cartilage is there, cartilage. So where the bones meet or at the joints, there has to be cartilage there, else it would rub. And that would be very painful, right? So we are very fearful and wonderfully made. All this was thought of, well thought of. You see here, here. Cartilage here, cartilage there. So it's kind of like a glue that gels the two bones together. So let's look at the joints, the cartilage and the ligaments. Right. A joint or cartilage is where two bones come together, and there are two types of joints. Okay. A suture joint between two cranial bone is immovable and contains no cartilage because it can't move. So it don't need a cartilage. And the symphysis joint, such as the pubic, 
um, symphysis or the joints between the vertebrae is a slightly movable joint with a cartilage pad or a disc between the bones. Uh, so a synovial joint is a fully movable joint. The two, there are two kinds of synovial joints. The hinge joints, which is the elbow and knee, because those are the most movable ones that allow motion in two directions. And ball and socket joints, the shoulder and hip, that allows motion in many directions. A synovial joint joins two bones whose ends are covered with articular cartilage. The body following. So we are there is movable um, at the joints where the joints are movable. There is cartilage there. Okay. Ligaments are strong fibrous bands of connective tissue that holds the bones together in a synovial joint. The entire joint is encased in a joint capsule that has a fibrous outer layer and an inner layer and an inner membrane. This inner synovial membrane produces synovial fluid, which is a clear, thick fluid that lubricates the joint. Can you imagine dry bones just going about? A meniscus is a special crescent-shaped um, cartilage pad found in some synovial joints, such as the knee. I think there is somewhere in the Bible, I think um, Ezekiel 37 or 30, Ezekiel 37, where it was talking about a valley of dry bone, right? And then what did God say? I'm going to put sinews on it. And that's like the connective tissues and skin and so forth, right? Because it's just bones, dead bones. Right, let me, I'm, I was, no. yeah. right. So there we have it. So the cartilage here. So these are the two bones, bone and bone. And there is a little sack here that uh, lubricates the bone, right? To prevent it from rubbing together. And that's the what? What's the name of that sack? It's right there on the screen. Cartilage. Cartilage. Oh, it's a synovial fluid. It has a fluid in it to um, lubricate the bone. That's all right. The what? The part here that is at the very end of the bone is the cartilage, right? But the fluid is what lubricates it. So let us look at the structure of a bone. So the bone or osseous tissue is a type of connective tissue. The surface of a bone is covered with periosteum or thick fibrous membrane. A long bone such as the humerus or the femur has a straight shaft or a diaphyst, diaphysis, sorry, and two widened ends, the proximal epiphysis, right? It is, as, it is at the epiphyseal plate that bone growth takes place. Along the diaphysis is a layer of dense compact cortical bone for weight bearing. Inside this is the medullary cavity, which is filled with yellow bone marrow that contains fatty tissue. In each epiphysis is can cancellous bone or spongy bone. It is less dense than compact bones and the spaces in it are filled with red bone marrow. 
So we have the red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. So here we go. So this is the shaft. Right. And we have the marrow cavity in here. And we have the different the hands of the bone. And this is the plate. And this is a compact bone. And here at the end, we see the cartilage, right? At the very end. Is okay. this the bone that is called the shank? Pardon? Is this the bone that is called the shank bone? We call it shank. That? Shank bone. This is a that long is, bone. Right, that's between the knee and the ankle. The femur. And the shank. Same one. You never, you never heard the term, sis? Yes, the shame. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just like if we are big too, I wouldn't know where it comes from, the shank. A net back. All right. Anyways. <laughs> There's a hand raised, sister Ken. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm not Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Yeah. No, this bone is not the shank bone. The shank bone or the shin bone is the one between the knee and the ankle. All right? This one the here. The femur is the thigh bone. Right. The femur is the thigh right. bone, not the shank bone. Hip to knee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to say, you know, it's so amazing you're talking about the bones because when you read in the Bible, the Bible talks about like health to thy bones and it talks about marrow to thy bones. You know, so health is linked to the bone. And the thing about it, in the bone marrow is where a lot of our adaptive immunity is, meaning our antibodies. We know that that's where they're actually stored. Yes. Yes. So when you meet up on a disease, the bone marrow. Mm -hmm. you become sick from it and you recover, actually the bone marrow stores your antibodies, your, your memory, your file. So that when you meet upon that again, you, you know, you have protection. So it's just amazing that the bone marrow, as they talk about, is where a lot of our immunity is. Yeah, just wanted to bring them. Because if you look at persons who are suffering from a like, blood disease or like leukemia and whatnot, it is because you know that's um white blood cell um diseases of the white blood cells. And they definitely need bone marrow transplant because that's where it's created, right? So it's important how it's just awesome how our body works, just looking at the bone. Okay. Um, hey. So let's look at bone growth. So ossification is the gradual replacing of cartilage with bone that takes place during childhood and adolescence. In addition, new bone is form it, formed along the, let me see. There was, so you see here, let me go back. These parts, you can see the, the, what they call that, the arrow? Yeah. Okay. So that's where the, gro the growth takes place. So at the end of long bones, as the body grows taller, although mature bone is a hard substance, it is also living tissue that undergoes change. About 10% of the entire skeleton is broken down and rebuilt each year. This process occurs in areas that are damaged or subjected to mechanical stress. So our body does repair itself. So we don't need any outside help unless there is a case where it's unable to. Osteoclast breaks down air of old or damaged bone. An osteoblast deposits new bone tissue in those areas. 
the farm, you know. Osteoclast breaks down the damaged bone and osteoblasts deposit new bone tissues to that area. The osteocytes maintain and monitor the mineral content, which is calcium and phosphorus of the bone. Almost all the body's calcium is stored in the bone, but calcium is also needed to help the heart and the skeletal muscles to contract. This is the importance of the bone. Calcius, calcium comes from food, but is also released in the blood as osteoclast breaks down old or damaged bone. So low calcium, <laughs> low everything. Because our bone needs it very much. So avascular necrosis, oh, so now we're looking at the diseases. So let me read over this slide. Osteoclast breaks down the old or damaged bone. Everybody following? Osteoblasts deposit new bone tissue in those areas. Osteocytes maintain and monitor mineral contents or calcium and phosphorus of the bone. Almost all of the body's calcium is stored in the bone. Almost, not all of it. But calcium is also needed to help the heart and skeletal muscles to contract. Calcium comes from food, but is also released into the blood as osteoclast. What was osteoclast's job? Breakdown. To break down damage or old bone, right? And what does osteoblast do? Deposit new bone this year. Right. I'm just going to look at how much time do I have, sis? I'm just going to look at fractures for the time. So we have. Um, fractures, closed fractures is when oh, the bone does. Hmm? It never read the one before that, the slide before that. This one? Yeah, that, yeah it never read the one. No, I was saying, I was going, okay, I'll just read it then. A vascular um, necrosis is the death of the cells in the epiphysis or of a long bone. Often the femur, and where is the femur? The thigh bone. Okay. This is caused by an injury, fracture, or dislocation that damages nearby blood vessels or by a blood clot that interrupts the blood supply to the bone. Right? So, this, all right, it says treatment, surgery to remove the dead bone, but we know we have the osteo what? It's damaged, so you can get treatment to remove the dead bone, then a bone graft. For large areas of a vascular necrosis, joint replacement surgery is done. That must be very painful. Right. I know people that, that um does knee replacement before they does it, they have a lot of pain. Very and I don't pain. work. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean everything is connected and to like remove one thing. Oh my goodness. So we have fractures. This is the one of the main things, especially in certain ages. Broken bones due to an accident, injury, or disease process, and fractures are characterized according to how the bone breaks. A fracture caused by force or torion during an accident or sport activity is a stress fracture. A fracture caused by a disease process such as osteoporosis, bone cancer, or metastasis of the bone to the bone is a pathological pathologic fracture. 
Fractures that are allowed to heal without treatment often shows malunion or mal malalignment of the fracture fragments. And there's um, surgery to do such for the treatment. They have different fractures, closed fractures when the bone does not break through, does not break through the overlying skin. An op open fracture is when the bone breaks through the overlying skin. This is also called compound fracture. So this is very traumatic <laughs> to look at. But so the closed fracture is like the skin is intact, but the bone breaks. And if you look at the open one, like it goes through the skin, poking out like that. All right, so we have non-displaced fractures when bone ends remain in their normal anatomical alignment. And displaced fracture is when the bone, the broken bone ends are pulled out of their normal anatomical alignment. And there we have it. So it breaks, but it doesn't move. It's like it just cut. And then the this not this place is when it's like it remove it moves or shift. I can I break a piece of stick. So the non and, sorry the non displaced would be like a hairline fracture somewhere, yeah, because it wouldn't. No. Move. Hairline fracture is when you can't see it, but you have to um, but it has to be through a, what do you call an X ray. X oh, okay. It's just like a little crack very thin. So you have um, colors fractures when the distal radius is broken by falling onto an outstretched arm. Oh, oh my. <laughs> and we know where the radius is, right? arm okay this could be one of the most painful it just looks painful right um com comminuted um fracture is when the bone is crushed into small pieces and we have compression fractures when the vertebrae are compressed together when a person falls onto the buttocks or when the vertebra collapses in on itself because of disease. Oof. So it's like one of them or a few of them just crush and it just tumble down. Like. Um, Sasha, that one happens like when people literally pull the chair from when persons are sitting down or so, right? Right. Oh. Okay magnitude of the fall. Oh, I see a comment. Oh, five minutes. Okay. And I, I will finish soon. The depressed fracture is when the cranium is fractured inward toward the brain. Ooh. And then we have the green stick fracture is when the bone is broken only on one side. This occurs in children because parts of the bone is still flexible cartilage. So it's like when a stick break, you can see part come off and the next part intact. So this happened mostly in children. This is the airline fracture cyst. I think this is the end of it, right? So the airline fracture is a very thin fracture line with the bone pieces still together. It is difficult to detect except on an X-ray because it's very thin. Okay, um, that is it for moi. Oh, I did what I want. Oh, I didn't, I didn't highlight this one. Sasha, so, so, so you can. Sorry, I was rubbing you off your time. 
It's not, you can go up until 10. It's not 10 yet. <laughs> but I'm finished. <laughs> okay, if there is any question. Yes, question, comments, time. Um, there's one slide that spoke about the uh, immovable joint. Which part, which joint is immovable? I didn't right, want so to cut you at that point. Um, the brain, the cranium, I should say, the cranium. Yeah. So there's no, there's no cartilage there. Ah. Uh, Oh, because it's different. Oh, I see what you're saying. There are different pieces joined together. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, yes. That is true. All right, thanks. There was a picture of the frame here. So if you notice these, there are different, a lot of bones in the, um, the head. But if you look at them, they are like sutured together. But there is no cartilage there because it's an immovable giant. They're immovable. I don't have a brain picture here, but not brain cranium. <laughs> Any other question or comments? Yeah, just earlier on when you were talking about um, the inter the joint, the hyaline membrane cartilage that covers the joint so that they can articulate without abrasion. It's, mm. if you look at it, it really tells you anatomically spiritual fact of how we as members of one body must relate. And I picture that hyaline membrane cartilage, you know, like when you see a chicken, you see the grizzly, they call the grizzly. Yeah, that is it. The cartilage that inter is interspace between bones. I kind of picture it as the grace, understanding that the spirit gives, that smooths over our interaction. Because we won't always do what we think the next will do. But if we have that grace, then it makes working together easier. We have more um, grace with one another when mistakes are made. And we always think the best. So I just couldn't mm -hmm. ignore how much it just sends a picture that the body in anatomy tells us how the body spiritually can operate and be at one. Amen. And also how fearfully and wonderfully we are made. Indeed. All right. When you mention about, I'm sorry, when you mention about the growth of, where the growth takes place at the ends of the bones, we always wonder how we grow when we sleep. So we find out how important sleep is for growth. And to know that when we sleep, we have no idea what is going on. We know we go from our baby stage up, up, up. And sleep is that little, that major connection that helps to have the body do what it needs to do for growth to take place and all the other processes. We don't grow, do you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, sister Sasha, you know, something that we need to give a deeper look at and understand the importance of calcium in the body. Because most of our calcium is stored in our bones, right? But not only there, but calcium also helps the heart and other parts of the body. Right. No, when we are children, I mean, now we know better, but when we were kids, we were fed cow's milk because of the calcium content and that, you know, we're told we need calcium. No, we know why. But 
understanding what calcium does to the body. Now we need to understand where to get the best calcium from. From foods, yes, but particular foods have more concentrated calcium uh, for the body to use. Um, so now we, we need to look at where that calcium should come from that the body uses uh, or the bone uses most of and the heart as well. That's uh, probably something that we can look at at some other point in time. Yes. Hi, Sister Shashoi. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. You said we don't grow, but I don't agree with you. Because you growth still growing, Brother Davis? Huh? Yes, because okay. the uh, children are developing, and you said is at the ends of the bone there is growth because of yes, yes, the production of new cells. But our bodies make over cells. Didn't didn't we have it at our bodies make over our cells every month? We every day we have dead cells are dying and cells new cells are made. That is growth. So growth takes place from the from 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 birth until death. But I'm yes. talking about you're talking about growing up. Yes, we grow up and we become adults, but we still grow all through our life because we cells are made and cells die and new ones are made. Brain cells and I think the only cells that are not remade is nerve cells. But all the other cells of the body are remade they, 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 um, on a daily basis. Yeah. That's not what I, I, I meant. I, I, think she meant the, I think she meant the bones. The bones, because the, the growth plates close up after adolescence, you know. So you right. have the epiphysis and the growth plate. Mm -hmm. And that's why when children... But that doesn't stop the bone. production of new yeah. cells. Yeah. So the bones, you you can't grow a height any 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 taller. No, you can't grow a taller at a certain, mm -hmm. certain, 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 certain age, you know. But mm. two few to grow. grow. Most of us can grow. Yes. But it, sorry, it I was fat I was can grow. Sorry, Elda, I was referring basically to the mere fact that the, the ends of the, when you say we grow from a child up, we wonder how it happens. So now we get an understanding to realize that the sleep process, how do you grow? You go to your bed and you sleep, then you get up and you're big. But then when you realize from it, that's the, the God technical side of it. Well, I would call it that. To know that the uniqueness of the fearfully and wonderfully made, it happens when you rest. When you're running up and down, you have a growth going on. I don't know. So it just okay. cemented right there. Okay, no, um, thank you guys. My time has ended. Um, let us continue to um, learn of the body, especially anatomy and physiology, how the body works, because we were what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Over to you, Sister Terry. Thank you very much, Sister <laughs> Um, I pray that we all have taken something from the self-focus. At this time, we'll go right into our musical item, followed by Sabbath School, which will be done by Brother Davis. So, Pastor, are you ready with the musical item? Is Pasta still on? Let's see. I wonder if he's in, in a zone that we can't, he can't hear us. Okay. Brother Davis, can you fill in? Give him give me the Bible, 272. Give me the Bible? Yes. Okay. 
All right. Number 272. Give me the Bible, star of gladness, leaving to cheer the wanderer, not known as tempest tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible. When my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear, give me the precious words by Jesus spoken, hold up his lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, I right shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining. Soon I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten. Teach me the danger of his realm below. That lamp of safety, oh, the gloom shall brighten. That light alone, the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, the love combined. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Okay. So it's my time now. Um, it's time for summer school. I'm sorry that I can't. Um, this machine says I, I cannot um, turn on the camera so you can see me. So we, we will just go on without you seeing me this morning. This is March 19. And we are talking about the right to the saints. Shall we pray, please? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your loving kindness and, we, and your tender mercy. So thank you for spending our lives. Thank you for your love as we come to study this lesson about tolerance and civil liberty. We pray that you will guide us and help us understand more of your truth. And that these things will prepare our minds for the time to have you pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. The right of descent. Okay. Welcome to everyone. And may God bless us as we study the word of God today. Um, could someone put up the lesson on the screen for me, please? In a minute, brother. Sure. In a Sounds minute. Good, my sister. Thanks very much.
Amos 3, verse 1 to 3 is our memory verse. Ably read by Sister Morris earlier. And we again hear this word. But the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So, here God is saying that he will punish his children because he knows them. And there's another text that says, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges the son whom he receiveth. So here we see that even in our normal, in our normal city, you can't get up and go scold another person's child. But God, who God knows, his children who subject to him, then he will scold us and he will correct us. I'm just trying to find there, here, this the text that I quoted a while ago. Whom the Lord loveth with chasteness. Okay. Now, fine. What is that text that says, Whom the Lord loveth, he chastens and scourges his son whom he, he receiveth? So, we go on. What condition of things must exist before there can be religious persecution? Could someone read for me? Could you put it up a little more, more pieces? Thank you. Note one. Who could read this for me, please? Could someone read this for me, please? Before there can be religious persecution, there must be a union of the civil and religious forces. Church and state must be united. The church must get control of and use the power of the state before she can punish those who dissent from her doctrines, dogmas, and dictation. Okay. So the church have to have the state ruling. You must have church and state before you can have persecution. And that has happened all of history. So what is persecution? What is persecution? Killing of people, punishing of persons for descent from what the church wants. And the church uses it to kill and to. Okay. Hebrews 12, verse 6. Thank you very much, Sister Shashai. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth the son whom he receiveth. Hebrews 12, chapter 6. Thanks very much, sis. Okay. Now, question two. There's Who a raised hand, Brother David. Excuse me? There is a hand raised. Okay, I didn't see the person. Could could you go ahead and speak, please? All right. Um, you ask the question. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yes, sir. Happy uh, Sabbath, sir. Hope we have been having a great one so far. It's a wonderful day. Yes. I'm responding to the question that you had asked. In addition to what was said, what is persecution? 
yeah. persecution is also the criminali criminalization of right doing where those persons who are doing right who are doing according to god's will are considered to be criminals and enemies of the church or the state and are punished accordingly persecution criminalization of right doing yes Okay, communalization of right wing and, and, and punishment. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. To whom are all accountable in religious things? And we have two texts of scripture here. Could someone read them for us, please? Romans 14, verse 4 and 12. And First Corinthians seven, verse twenty-three. Romans fourteen four and twelve. Romans fourteen. Yes. Yeah. Verse four and twelve. Verse four. Four and twelve. Who are who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. 12. So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Okay, thank you very much, Sister Angela. Yes, yes. So the question says, to whom are all accountable in religious things? And this text says, the man, the servant, it is him and the servant having the matter, and God holds them up. But verse 12 says, everyone will give an account to God. Now, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 23, he says, You are bought with a price, ye shall not be the servants of men. So, that price is the precious blood of Christ. Christ is the precious blood of Christ. Um, you are bought with a price. Precious blood. P R E S. Sorry, P R E S. U S. Is that it? Precious blood of Christ. That Texas says that also. You are bought with a price. Precious. That, that is the other the other text, Ella, first Corinthians seven twenty-three. No, you are bought with a price. First Corinthians seven twenty-three. It says that you are bought with a price, therefore be not the servants of men. But the first Peter one nineteen. First Peter one nineteen, sir, it says um verse eighteen, for as much as he knows that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your being conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That is first Peter chapter one, verse 18 and 19. So the, the, the price that we the price that we are bought with is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So it is not man that bought us. So we don't owe man anything in religious matters, except the Bible says, oh, no one anything but to love one another. But with, with regard to loving God, while, the, while there is the, the, the um, man can say, you kill somebody, you must be punished, because he that shed his man's blood, by man must his blood be shed. That's another scripture. But 
when it comes to serving God, nobody has the right to tell you what to do. It is your conscience. My man must say, God, he said, he does say this man blood. Come in. While you get to it, Brother Davis, and it shows us, you know, how God deals with us. Yes, he, sir. Yes, he doesn't force anyone out to worship him. He doesn't compel. Yeah. Um, Thank you. In the book, Patriarchs and Prophets. Okay. In the books, Patriarchs and Prophets, you know, volume one and two. Well, in the early part, he said that God desires service of love out of appreciation for his character. So he wants people to choose him. He does not even God puts in us a hardware that we must worship him. There is something in us to worship, but who? It's when we recognize that God he wants. So how dare man who is who is a worm of the earth to compel man in who they must worship and how they must worship? When not even That's God right. Not even God doesn't force anybody. God respect our God respect our choices. I appreciate that one, Elder. Yes. Definitely. Thank you very much, sir. But uh, this is a text I want to find on this spot, you know, and can find it. He that sheddeth man blood by man his blood must be shed. I think it's a way in Exodus. So God, 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 God leaves us to a choice. So who dear man want to choose send, for send another the person? Say the passage again, Brother Davis. Excuse me, sis. Say the passage you're searching for again. He that sheddeth man blood by man his blood must be shed. Okay. I'm going to go after it as well. We, we can look at Genesis 9 and verse 6, Brother Tenda. Thank you very much, sir. Because I was going to say it's somewhere there. This is 9 6. It was after the flood. Who so shall this man blood? That's why I can't find it. This is 9 6, sir. Thank you. Who so shall this man's blood? By man his, shall his blood be shed. For the image of God made he man. So that gives that is why man has a right to punish another person who sheds blood and such. Brother D. Yes, sir. I'm happy to have a question for you before you move on. Um yes, sir. earlier in the previous question you said we ought to leave it to a man's um conscience to I guess to act or do whatever yes. it is. So then my question would be, what is conscience? Conscience. Conscience yeah. is what God put, puts in you and work you by his spirit to, 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 to do right or wrong. Well, what if I'm using the right set of words to describe this thing? Okay. What God, so what, so it's, it's our ability it's, to act, to do right based on the movement of the Holy Spirit. Based on right, based on the instruction of the word and the movement of the spirit of God. Yeah, Romans right. two fifteen tells you. So then, uh, Romans two fifteen. Romans yeah, two fifteen. Through, through the work of the of the law. That's what can you? Yes, Romans two fifteen says, "Show the work of the law written in their hearts, so their conscience also bearing witness." All right, and the meanwhile accusing or excusing one another. So. All consciences are not okay. educated alike. All consciences are not educated okay. alike, but yeah. com coming forth from the matrix, and as we grow, we develop, everybody develops a base conscience of right or wrong. All right, but that conscience no needs to be educated and elevated by the word of God. But if you take it back to the simplest form, um, people have different consciences. 
but no matter how skewed their consciences are, you can't force a man's conscience. No matter how right or, or okay. no matter the level of alignment, their conscience is like, you can't yeah. force it. That's really something between the you man. You can't force it. And is in a being, yeah, and, yeah, and you know, it, you can't and, force yes. it. Yes, man and, 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 and his God and what is in him. Yeah, you are so right. And, and that is why people choose to do what they want to do. And despite persecution, despite discipline, each person chooses what they want to. From, 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 from childhood, you tell a child, don't do that. And he looks in your face and does it. And you lash him and he go back and do it again. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're not so, wrong. So even much more yeah. an adult. Even much more an adult. Right, much more an adult. To, to force someone. Man go to jail for the yeah. same thing five times. Yeah. Yeah, at least I tried to reform him in jail, but to force his conscience. It's like many, you ever heard the saying, um, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion. He's of the same opinion. So it's like if you force someone to conform, you see the laws of the land are much different from the laws of God because the laws of the land are satisfied as long as you outwardly conform. But the laws of God need to be a principle where outward confirmation was is not the aim, but the aim is that you're in you have the mind of Christ. And outward confirmation That's right. is just Outside, outside confirmation is result of the of, of the change of, of the mind. Yes, result, yeah. yeah. I'm so here, so I, got, I got bumped off a little bit. So could you repeat okay. the part where it says every man has a base conscience and you said something else after that, I didn't hear. Oh no, for that point I was just saying that all consciences are not educated the same. However, however, the line of education, however far or near their consciences are aligned to the, to the light, to the word of truth, you can't force it. You know, you just can't force it. Let's say a man genuinely believes that for a simple thing like, you know, Sunday is a Sabbath. We, we, can't make a, we can't make a Saturday law. We can't make a Sabbath law. Okay. That would have been absolutely nothing, zero. Because even though the man might obey it, he's of the same opinion still that I'm not convinced, I'm just outwardly conforming for some reason. And that is not what God desires of his subjects. He desires willing obedience, not one that is bent. It shows the difference between Satan's character and man's character and uh, God's character. Much higher. So then, Brother Williams, there, we, there goes the, the, the necessity for us to constant pray that God transform our characters into that of his, so that we will be willing to obey. Am I, am I wrong here? No, willing to obey is different from being compunct, you know, a compunction. By That's right. An older horse. Yeah. Willing, willing to obey. Right. You know, it's joy to doing it. Just like the Bible says, so God love it, a cheerful giver. Man yeah. can give. That's right. Well, meaning that well, there is some feedback there. All right. Yeah, what you get? Yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah, man. It's, All right. It's, 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 I'd like to, um, to share in relation yes, to. William says there is a that, uh, there's a passage of scripture in Romans chapter two where it speaks about mm -hmm. speaking about the judgment God's judgment by the law. It says for for as many as have sinned without the law shall be watch it first please without the law, and as many that uh, many first, have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers right. of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which are not, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are a law unto themselves. And it goes further to say, which through the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the means while accusing or else excusing one another. 
So regardless of where we are in terms of us educating our consciences, as Brother Williams um, indicated earlier, we are going to be judged based on, on, on what we believe is right within our hearts, within our consciences. So our, our moral compass can be further directed or sharpened by the word of God and, and, um, and by, by, by God speaking directly to us. But if that, if that is not the case at this point in your experience, then your, your belief of rightness and wrongness is what is going to be guiding you in terms of what you do as a, as a human being in the sight of God. And this is how God will judge us in, uh, according to what Paul put in Paul's letter to the Romans here in chapter 2. So um, we, yes. we cannot force anyone to do something against what they believe is right. And I think that is it. That is the point. I, I believe that is being made. Yes. Elderberry. Yes. Definitely. Yes, Elderberry. Can I? This is why a conscientious objection to something is such a grave issue. If somebody has a conscientious objection to a medical um, intervention, for example, to force them against that is to is to rob them of a very vital portion of their humanity that God made them with because governments cannot grant freedom. God already made man free. The all governments can do is take it away. All right. Uh, so to, to tell a man that you can't do what your conscience dictates, which is why when persons, for example, ask me about um, whether I would um, take a certain vaccine in the, um, the COVID-19 vaccine, for example, I did not come and say, well, my church forbids it or because that's still not your conscience. You say, listen, I conscientiously believe that it violates, yeah. you know, what I'm for. And to, to, to force me against that and hold, you know, job and all these things aloft if I you don't know? take right. away one's, not even right, but, you know, their humanity to take away a, a vital portion of a vital what, portion. God made man, which is to adhere to his conscience, to follow the compass of, compass of his conscience. Yeah. Um, can I can I jump off the lesson for a bit and say, and, and uh, just I, I just remember this as Brother Barry was talking. Um, in medicine, in, in, in nursing and pharmaceuticals, they put sugar in medications for children. Because the, 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 the matter is that you mustn't force children to take medication. So you put sugar in it and it, 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 um, it, it makes it acceptable to them. So it's the same thing with, 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 with the conscience. You cannot force somebody to do something. It's against the law to force. But when you see no come now with this matter of force to worship. So here, here, here we go. Question, therefore, when men attempt to control in religious matters, what have we right, what have we a right to do? Question three, what have we a right to do? When man attempt to control us in religious matters, have we, right we to have a right to dissent. You know, dissent. There, is a, there is a quote by Sister Wise. She says, neutrality and... Mm, I'm trying to remember the next word. Neutrality and mm, in a religious crisis is, yes. I'm going to find it for you. Let me find it and come back. But yeah, we have a right to dissent and dissent has a negative connotation to it. You know, if you hear the yeah. word dissenters, there is a, a, even the word rebel, you know, mm -hmm. but a dissenter is normally seen as a rebel. Yes. But there are times when dissenting and rebelling against a system which has gone awry is necessary. I'm Very not going necessary. to go. Very necessary. And as we go on in the lesson, that point will come out as well. Okay. Until you find that statement, sir. Question four. What is the meaning of the term tolerate, tolerance, and toleration? And that is no two. Could you... Um, yeah, yeah, no, yes. 
could you show the first please sis? Note two. Yeah, we're looking at note two, yes, thank you. The act of toler to, to be tolerant. The act of enduring tolerate to suffer to be or to be done. To allow or permit negatively by not preventing toleration the allowance of that which is not wholly approved specifically when contrary to or different to or different from those of the established church or belief. So is toleration something good or bad? Because toleration is not is not to is toleration just to allow things to happen when you disagree with it. You don't agree with something, but you just allow it. Right. So to toleration is not the same as liberty. That's right. Uh -huh. Freedom so liberty, is freedom. Yeah, liberty and freedom is where you right. the, the someone's right to practice right. something different from you. To practice. That's right. Yeah. Toleration is where you're giving them time to come around and you hold them in a sort of mild contempt. Right. And you're just waiting. Just like right now, I, I, thought, I watched a video recently that they're you know, asking people, how do they view the unvaxxed? And some people actually say, listen, my patience has run out. So you, you realize that it's toleration <laughs> and not so much as no, they have practiced their rights. Right. And I respect their rights. That's that would be freedom and acceptance. But toleration is like uh, you 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 need to do what we're doing. The government has give you given you free gifts and all these things. Mm -hmm. You still not on my own. Mm -hmm. I have lost my patience. And same thing with the Sabbath. You know, as it's going right. to come down to not accepting that mm -hmm. they are informed differently and their consciences lead them in a different way. Therefore. Yeah let them alone they're gonna be saying well they need to think as we think you see it just smacks up the devil and how he operates right so so that is where that is where you're gonna have a situation where persons are going to be killing each other and they, 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 they give them the go ahead to kill who you want who is not complying with the standard set and I think this, this kind of mentality has been developed by this COVID-19 issue with, the, with, with all of this vaccine situation. That, that's how I see it. I, I don't know how others see it. I think this is an education to the public that will develop wherever it, 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 it will begin to develop. But question five here, what does toleration imply? Could someone read, read through this list for me, please? There's an implication for toleration. What does toleration imply? Hello? Hello, could someone read a note for me, please? Okay, I was just looking for the quote, but let's read the note. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Hi. Religious toleration, the best roots um, over the... What's that? Colonies fronting the lakeshore of the Chicago World Fair of 1893 was this motto. Religious toleration, the best fruits of the last four centuries. If this be true, then the fruits of these centuries have not been the best for religious liberty is a long way ahead of religious toleration. Toleration is freedom recognized not as a right, but as a favor. Toleration implies heretical and disapproved, but permitted. Wherever there is an established religion, the only thing the state can do aside from persecuting is to tolerate. This is why so many English writers talk about toleration instead of liberty. England has an established religion. Toleration implies the right of the state to dictate in matters of religion. 
it means allowing. Okay. It means the allowing of that which is not approved or liked as a matter of sufferance or endurance. It implies the right to prohibit. The right to permit implies the right to prohibit. And the right to permit and prohibit implies the right also to compel. It says the right of the parent to say to the child, you may go and you must go implies the right to say, you must go. If the state has a right to say to its citizens, you may work on Sunday, it has a right to say you must not work on Sunday. And it has a right to say these, it also has also the right to say you must work on Sabbath. There's a very great difference between toleration and liberty. Toleration is a concession which may be with which, which may be withdrawn. It implies a preference for the ruling form of faith and worship and a practical disapproval of all other forms. This is a long note, man. <laughs> it's a very long note. Yeah. Um yeah. The, 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 I I expected to have read the, the there's a um a shorter version of it. Come back to verse five, number five, sis. It's somebody, um, it's, 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 you know. Come back down, please, um, sister, sister. Come back down to, 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 the, to the question, yes. See, there, there, better there. No, come back down to the question, yes. Come back to, to number five question itself. Yes, see it, see it here? The right to dictate religious things, allowing that which is not approved, the right to prohibit and compel, right? And this is this is the um this is the, the, the note in short. So you have an established form and you, you tolerate the person who who, who do because he you say all right to give him as you said earlier, Brother Williamson, you give the person time, but at the same time you retain the right to come to say he must do, he can do what he doesn't want to do. But he, has, he also must, you, it's also the same, he must do it. And if he doesn't do it, then he'll be punished. And that is toleration. So you tolerate a child now, and tomorrow you lash him for the same thing that he tolerated yesterday. Because you say, okay, I can't allow you to be doing this because you, you must grow up to be different. And you must come in line. So toleration is, is, is to allow someone to do as they please, within your wishes, until you choose otherwise. Yeah, well, Brother um, Davis. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, you see, this is why all governments normally start is tell you what is allowed. True. For example, when governments now tell you how many persons can go to church hmm. um, or how certain functions must go it is a creeping it's a creeping thing because it's easy now for government to get overarching and say well in the past we have the precedence of telling you what to do and you did it for a certain contingency or emergency well now we have another one and um, this is what we're saying you see so i believe that in a way even if the, the the pandemic and how it played out it has allowed the services of the church to fall into the hands of Caesar in a certain way. Because there's a social aspect of the yeah. church as well. Caesar granted things. And mm -hmm. I think that there needs to be a correction that Caesar, we heard what you said. We we agreed out of such a thing, but it is not you that gives us the right. You know, we probably don't need to say it, but we need to recognize it that right. it is not Caesar that gives us the right how or when to worship, you know. Yeah. Lest we think it, that power comes from Caesar. That's right, you see. And th that is why I believe that the COVID-19 was a pre preparation for what? For the next stage, you know? So it's just to get the people, grooming the people for the next stage. But let's pray that God will give his people strength to cope. What kind of rights do we exercise in worshiping God? working on Sunday, etc. Natural or inherent in A-Liberal rights? What kind of rights do we exercise in worshiping God? Well, I guess the answer kind of is, is, is there that it is natural and inherent. And in yes, 
Yes, in, 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 yes, because we are citizens of this planet. We are not True. citizens of Jamaica, of America. It, that is men's designation based on where you're born. But God created us to be citizens of this planet. Mm -hmm. There was no geographical restriction as to where you can be or where you should be or True. any restriction for persons moving from one location to the next. True. Is because of men who have sought to, to um, power and to protect, quote unquote, their borders. They would have set these things up. But it is, it, it, it is our right that God has given to us to worship, to be free to do what we, it's, it's, it is called the will, the only thing that we truly possess. Everything else belongs to God, but the will he has given to us to exercise it to exercise it according to how we, 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 we see it. And when, 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 when it, is, it is educated by God himself, our will become one with his, and we exercise it according to his will. But outside of that, the Lord still gives us the freedom to worship according to the dictates of our consciences. Our consciences. Sir, on that note, Elder Berry, I like that one. So, um, when the, the, the dictates is put down and we go against it, I must have changed my thought on that one, but we go against it. Because um, right now, when, when we are looking at COVID and, the, and, the, and the, the requirements, so to speak, and we would um, analyze it. To know that God, I think a reading somewhere back that I heard mention about God choosing our situations. I guess in this case, if um, putting us where, choosing to put us where he would want to have us to see what we would do, would also go down the road of obedience. So I like what you're saying there is that he would choose because we are in the in in um in this the world as we are here you now and, and where we are grown or where we are um we're born and stuff. And the Lord would choose the situation that we'll be in. At the same time, is the contents part of it would come in where he would see what we would do. Is that Adam and Eve in the garden? He gave them restrictions, and it would have been the obedience of if they would go against it or no. And at the end of the day, we go against the results in where it is. So if he chooses the situations that we should go in, he wants to, I believe, see how much we would, which side we would go on then, the obedience for even the Sabbath sake. We are here on the choice of what? Is it about our conscience or is it about what God wants? Um, okay. Yeah. I think it is both, sis. It's both our consciences and what God wants for us. Because God wants our consciences to be aligned with his will. Amen. He, he wants us to, to be resolute and stand firm as a needle is to the pole. As it relates to what he wants for us to do. Because it, it, it only benefits man to, to, to be obedient to God. And, you that know, is it, it, it is a blessing to have children because a lot of times your children do <laughs> against what you really want them to do. But <laughs> you as an adult, you see what is best for them and you act in the, their best interest. But sometimes, <sighs> you know, it doesn't matter what you do. They still go against oh, what you do. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, so it, it, it brings a different kind of feeling, though, when yes. your child decides to align his will with what you really want for them True. you know True. and it, it, it is it is clear to us that having children is a is a indeed a great blessing to mankind because it Amen. helps to put us in the place of god as it really so we and can clearly ourselves. understand yes True. indeed <laughs> what god <laughs> goes through to know what that he really you wants for us Yes, to know that you were a child and things that you used to do, and you see your children doing them now, and you're about to reprimand them, it brings you back to when you were small and like, oh, this is my mother did I beat my father. All right, so 
Mm-hmm. How worries about it? And it, it really puts you in that spot because I have a friend who have, he said, when he's going to reprimand his children, he takes them and sit them down. All right. You remember when you did this and that? What you think I should do with you and that? And he said sometimes when he remembered it for himself as a child, he was like, now that I'm an adult with children, what I would have wanted, now I'm seeing why what was done to me then was important. So now I'm about to do it to my child. I'm going to let them see why it is important. So it really does. It really mm-hmm. does make. Um, yeah, because <laughs> it takes me back to the memory verse. To the, 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 to, to the, 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 the scripture that I read earlier. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Yes. Okay. We're moving on to. Moving on to number seven, I've covered a whole heap of time. Can the state give men rights which inherit in men themselves? Can the state give men's rights which inherit in men themselves? No. 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 To give men, to give men their natural rights is not the power of the province of the state. It has no rights to give. Rights come from God, the Michigan Watchman. Michigan Watchman of June 1892 failed to comprehend this when it said the only legal right the Seventh day Adventists have to do secular work in shop, in house, in field, or to run their presses, their publishing concern on the Christian Sabbath is a right given to them by the state on religious grounds only. No, that's not it. The right only God can give it, because only is God make us. And he say, you are bought the price, therefore be not servants of men. Question seven, question eight. Somebody ha- ha- had, had a point to make? No, I'm saying, do you see it? This is the exact thing that, that states, you know, got bright and said that, listen, are we give it a right? Right. And um, just a little, I asked a question earlier on, and it's not that, we go to disobey now is that you are put in a situation where your obedience is now seen as disobedience. Look at Daniel. Daniel was always worshiping God, you know. Mm-hmm. Daniel prayed three times a day and they tolerated him. But mm-hmm. Daniel did nothing different when the no. decree went forth. He was just doing what he always did. So it shows you that something unjust got into the mix to make your obedience disobedience, which goes back to the very first definition that Elderberry gave this morning, where right doing is made criminal. That's what happened to Daniel. So the people who resist the Sunday law are not really resisting the Sunday law. They're just obeying God. Amen. True. Second Thessalonians 2 verse... Um... Brother Davis. Yes, sir. Happy Sabbath. Uh, can I just hop in? Um, before you go any further, um, Earlier on, you mentioned about if the states give the right. And when you think about it and think of the laws of God, um, you know, we, where the state part, the state's part, or where Caesar is concerned, is what has to do with the last, the last six of the commandments, not the first four. Right. Yeah. Right. And yes. so, in in essence, um, the state is actually supposed to preserve, help to preserve those rights. True. Not, not, not in terms of, of giving them, but help to make sure that other people are not infringing on and we're not supposed to infringe. So he's actually supposed to help in, in uh, as, as Brother Kenny just pointed a while ago, that what you find is that, not, that we're, you know, God's people are doing anything wrong. They were doing what they were doing all along. But some, somebody changed somewhere along the line. So, so the state's position is to help to uphold what other was already in place. That was right. Okay. That that put me that the points that, that, that the last two three points made. The put him out of Second Thessalonians two verse four. He say, "Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is worship, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." So when somebody wants to force against your conscience, they put themselves in God's place, and that's what happened with the with the paper say. Okay, number eight. Number question number eight. From whom do, do, do such rights come? And that says from God. 
And as a pagan said a while ago, answer question nine was the province of the state to protect men in their rights. Right? How are governments controlled? How are governments controlled? By the majority. Yes. Government, um, for simple reasons, they are controlled by, by the one in, in note, note number seven. Note number seven. Brother Davis. Yes, sir. Is it that they should just be controlled by the majority or they should can't be controlled by the laws? They should be controlled by, by, by the law, but they are not controlled by the law. They are controlled by the majority. And you know that inherently has a problem? Depending on the, dem the, the de democratic form of government, yes. mm -hmm. um, because yeah, the, the, the chief minister of Jamaica, for example, remember minister means servant. Did you say also right. is chief among you? Let him be your minister. Mm -hmm. So he is really a servant, a public servant right. of the highest order. So he's serving the people. Mm -hmm. So really, mm -hmm. it's the majority that he is representing. But you see. If you have 20 wolves and one sheep, we already know who is going to be lunch in a democratic situation where you're outvoted. <laughs> However, in a republic yes. form, you know, in a republicanism, which is one of the, the horns of um, the beast. Yeah, republicanism, everybody is represented regardless of their minority. Oh, that, yeah. That's a better form of government, yeah. So in democracy is rooted that little, that I don't know, is it that little disadvantage? Yes, 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 yes. I see the point. I see your point. Well, so brother, no. brother, brother Kenny, sorry, brother, brother, um, Davis. Yes. So, sir. so in that, I can't when the um the the president or the prime minister of Canada. When he has said that should they tolerate such views that they they they, they freedom convoy they hold um uh, unacceptable views. Um, so in a sense like that then is because their views are unacceptable. And he said, should we tolerate um these individuals? So if it is based solely on on um on the, the majority, then at any point they could just exterminate the, the minority. Yes, that's right. Yes. He has spoken okay. like a dragon when he used the word tolerate, you know, because he has really gone overboard in some of the things. Because these millions of people's views are just no one wants to come to the table to ascertain what his neighbor is saying. You know, and that's always going to go with the Sunday law. Just a few persons will want to hear the facts. True. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear, they just want you to comply. They are not listening, that's the history. Number 11 question, where do the majority stand on religious questions? Matthew 7 verse 13 and 14. Could someone read that for us please? Matthew 7. Um, there's a water right at this chair. Yes, listen, Mark 12 and 13, but they... To the water. Um, I'm, I'm going to the Sabbath school. This one finish? Yes, B -b brother. I don't want to listen to it. Brother Fagan, mute the mic, please. Mute the mic, is open, yes. No, man, my mic was closed. No, we heard everything you just said. You, really? Uh, yeah, you tried, tried, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about that. Close it now. Um. Yes. 11. Someone read Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14 for me, please. Um, Matthew, it's, it's 12, or 12 and 13 or 13. The lesson mark 12 and 13, but what I'm looking at before me look like 13 and 14. Okay. You can read it's, 12 to 14. Says, all right, it said, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men do, un, do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 
Read verse 14 now, please. So because straight is a gate and narrow is a way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I understand what you're saying now, Ella. Yes, sir. Okay, so where do the majority stand on you? These questions. Majority stand on the wrong side. <laughs> Always stand on the wrong side. True, sure, true. Sure. See my Macaulay. Yes, Macaulay in his, in his essay on Gladstone said, have not almost all the governments in the world always been in the wrong and religious subjects? Indeed they have. And for the simple reason that they are controlled by majorities. The majority are almost always wrong and religious subjects. They are wrong on the subject of the Sabbath and this manifests itself wherever government legislate on the question. They favor and defend the Sunday, the papal Sabbath, and not the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord. The, the, the majority went down in, in, in the flood. The majority was lost in Sodom. The majority was among the, the Jews. The majority died and the minority went into captivity. The majority has always been wrong, brethren. What scripture is sometimes cited to show that we are under obligation to obey whatever laws men may make. Romans 13, verse 1. Romans 13, 1. And if we read down to um, beyond verse 1, they will understand what it is saying because they're going to use verse 1 to 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 say that we must you must just obey what they say. When you read further down, you realize why they did it. So someone go ahead and read for me, please. It says let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. The powers that be rather are ordained of God. Right. That alone, well, hold on a little bit. That alone would indicate that whatever the government says, you as a Christian stand um, you, you as a Christian should obey whatever it is. So if you read on, continue reading now, my my, my, my brother. It says, Whosoever therefore resists resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Okay, For he now, hold on a bit. What is good? The Bible said the Sabbath is to be kept. Man says Sunday to be kept. What is good? Is what is in the law of God. Continue, sir. It says, for he is a minister of God to thee, to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger ought to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's right. So wherefore, ye, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for. For this cause, pay the tribute also. Tribute. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Right. Render therefore to, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Down to verse 9, it, it, it lists the 10 commandments. It, it lists the last six commandments, verse 9 and 10, and says that the, the law. So it refers to man relationship to man. That's what Romans 13 is talking about, not man relationship to God. But there Give me about three minutes to talk about that, maybe. Excuse me? Give me about three minutes to wrap up. Three minutes. Wow. Mm. Okay. Brother right, Davis. Me, yes, sir. I, I know you're trying to you assist us to wrap up there, but um I, I can we I, ask I, for I, extra I 10 what... minutes, Sister Terry?
Can huh? your friend find it for 10 minutes? Mm, okay, go ahead. All right, thank you. Go ahead, brother. Right, something based on what um, Brother Barry just read um, in terms of the role of the government and what they should be doing. So what happened then when we find um, that the government is basically acting out the mind of, of Satan in terms of being the dragon and, and persecuting God's people? What has changed? What caused that? You answered it in the question that you asked. It is the mind of Satan that, that is acting out against God so as people there so. But but what, what how how does he get to that point though? Because the Bible is saying that this is what he's supposed to do. And um and maybe to some extent imperfect as it is, you might actually find some of that happening. But there comes the point now where where this power now turn as it were and is persecuting those that he's supposed to be protecting. Right. What would have caused that? It, 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 what Satan is controlling the, 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 the earth, controlling the minds of, of humans. Could we say that? Because this, this, this while in Babylon, yes, you had um, a small amount of persecution, the greater part of persecution came when the when Rome came, when the earth was at its worst. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess in, in a sense you were seeing in terms of in the Christ days that it was Satan that moved upon arm um, upon 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 the people, and in the end again it will be Satan. But at the same time, what we see in Revelation seventeen is that the the, the dragon or the or the government powers is being directed by this woman that's writing it. Yeah. Anybody have a favorite song they want to sing? And she is already drunk with the blood of the mother. Hi, bro. Could you turn off your mic, please? Yes. What would such an application of the scripture imply? Note it. Um, note it. Is that it? Note it. Note it. Um, note it to say that because we are told to be subject to the higher powers, we are therefore bound to obey every law that men may make would imply that if the state commanded men to murder, they would have to do it, or to steal, they would have to steal, or to lie, swear this on their parents or worship idols, they would have to do all these things. So that, that is not what the scripture is saying. No, yes. what? Yes, yes, sir. It is quite clear it says that, that for he is the minister of God. True. Which means that if you're ministering, if you're a servant of God, you do according to what God tells you God to says. do. If you, if you are not doing so, then the, all of this that is said is clearly rescinded from, from, from those persons who are children of his. Because the, the government is no longer a minister, is no longer a servant, because it is True. not obeying the dictates of God. Oh, God. In, in any law that is made contrary to God, the, the, um, by, by a governing power, what they have effectively done is to remove themselves from being ministers of God. And therefore, the children of God has no obligation to obey. Okay. So let us look at um, Daniel 3. Um, Daniel 3, verse 8 to 12 and 16 to 18. And we do a comparison here. Daniel 3, I have jumped to verse 8 to, to question 18. Just trying to make some comparison on the same point that you made, Brother Barry, a while ago. Daniel, Daniel 3, verse 8 to 12 and 16 to 18. 8 to 12. Yes. Yeah. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree, oops, it, yeah, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth 
that he should be cast into the midst of the burning, a burning fiery furnace. Well, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 16 to 18 now. 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then said Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Okay, does, does, this, does this text contradict Romans 1, Romans 13? Does the happenings in the Daniel 3 contradict the order of Romans 13? No, not at all. Definitely not. Definitely not, brother. Because Romans 13 says you must obey according to the order of God. And Nebuchadnezzar had taken upon himself to command worship for himself and not for God. And so the people of God had to take a stand. Um, what are we to conclude, therefore, respecting the powers that be? This is question 21. What are we to conclude, therefore, concerning the powers that be? Based on what we read a while ago. They have no right to intimately in, in matters of conscience, I would say. I know that it answers his religious thing. Mm -hmm. I think conscience goes to the heart of it. Conscience, yes. That is right. That is right. Because whether you are a Christian, Rastafarian, or whoever, Nobody has a right to, in, to, 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 to force your conscience against what you believe or what you want to do. And um, this is what governments has, has decided to, to be doing for so, 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 so long. You know, Elder Keith just mentioned something which I think is a very important point, you know. What really causes yes. persecution is when a woman takes control of the beast. We see throughout scripture that governments are always prone to persecute. We saw that in Medo Persia, um, when they mm -hmm. persecuted in the book of Esther, for example. We yes. saw it in Daniel that three you're just talking about with Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. And even in the time of pagan Rome, when each of these um, pagan warriors took over, I can't remember which one I was reading, and the, he was being actually invited to settle a squabble. And he said, no, let them deal with it. But you see, when Rome took over for the 1,260 days, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, persecution went universal. And mm -hmm. that is the time we live in. No, look at the times we live in. We live in a time of tolerance, right? Mm -hmm. Where there is mild, pers relatively mild persecution. Yeah. But when, when the papacy, or not even the papacy, but its daughters as well are visibly enthroned are given rights to, the, yes. to direct government you know the fallen churches of christendom are given a big say in policies and the legislation mm -hmm. we will see persecution because we've seen it in the past god right. required that which is past what is past will come again there is no new come thing mm -hmm. yeah and it looks good people said the church must do this and the church must do that but do, do they know that they're saying the church can do it without the arm of government but once the woman rides the beast, you must have persecution. You must have persecution. 
Um, the the Acts 4, 17 and 18, I, I will just do that for the last. In the days of the apostles, when they um when they were they were prohibited to speak the name of Christ, they said we ought to obey God rather than men. So in everything we are to obey God rather than men. Men cannot dictate conscience. Men cannot dictate religion. Men cannot dictate whether you keep the Sabbath or not. They can, they can dictate whether you kill or not because that is man to man. But men cannot dictate what you hear from God to speak and what you hear from God to do to yeah, please God. Then, I know we soon close, but you see, it is the design of Satan to so obfuscate the laws of God that if you, it, it will make it seem that obedience to the laws of God will mean that you go against wellness and benevolence for all. Of course, yeah. that is an, that is an illusion, but that is his, his daily plan for people to say, if you if you obey God's law, then people are gonna die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, brethren, thanks for the comments. Thanks for our cooperation. Um. So we we are closing now. Brother Williamson, can you pray to close for us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath school. One of the richest parts of the services of the day. Lord, and we thank you for the subject which was discussed. We we needs be needs to look into it much, much more, especially as we come closer to issues in this world coming to a head. We need to understand, dear Lord, why we are who we are and how we must prepare to stand. And even though we prepare, we know that the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but going forth is of the Lord. And so we depend upon you, for we know our fleshly arm will fail us. There is no power in it. We need the empowering of your spirit to meet that which is to come. But clean up our vessels, Forgive us of our many sins and help us, dear Lord, to have the mind of Christ so that we may not desire to transgress. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Over to you, Sister Terry. Yes, thank you, Brother Davis, for the musical item, also for the reviewing of the lesson. I also like to thank all those who make comments. It's much appreciated. At this time, we'll Turn over to Sister Susan Ruffin for the welcome and fellowship. Sister Susan Ruffin. Good morning to everyone. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. It's a privilege to be in the courts, to be in God's presence on this holy Sabbath day. The opportunity has granted unto me to welcome each and everyone that makes it possible to be in worship this morning. We normally call everybody and welcome everybody. So I'll do it different this morning. All the couples, we welcome you. All husband and wife, we welcome you in a very special way. If you are not there, maybe you wouldn't have service. The single people, without you, service might have been not what it is this morning. So I welcome you. I welcome everyone to Sabbath school this morning. And all who participated in the lesson, we welcome you and we thank you. A special welcome is going out to our dear pastor. Today he will be he's celebrating his birthday. And it's a wonderful thing to be celebrating your birthday on the Sabbath. Day. So you have double blessings. I hope that his family will make it a special day for him today. So happy birthday, pastor. And I wish you all the best. And everybody else, happy Sabbath. And I wish you all God's blessings. Welcome one, welcome all in Jesus' name. Thank you. Blessings. Amen. 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 At this time, we have come to a very special moment in our, on our program. How could we go without hearing from our children? We now turn over to Brother Dave McFarlane, who's the host for today's children program. Thank you, 
Happy Sabbath, Pastor. All right, it's the children's segment. Happy birthday, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and what you All collected right. last night, Pastor, that is on behalf of CFMI. Happy birthday. Oh boy, thank you. <laughs> Amen. All right. Thank you, Sister Sylvester. Thank you, CFMI. Thank you, Sister Rufi. No, you can see me. Let me say that, brother, last night I learned that today is Brother Fagan's birthday as well. I think he's on. I heard him, I heard him earlier. Oh. Elder Fagan, you're still Happy on. Happy birthday, Brother Fagan <laughs> and Pastor. Good is compliance. And yes, those hombres. Terry. I was just saying happy birthday to you and Brother Fagan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy All birthday right. to both yeah. gentlemen. We have found a nice little spot now where the reception is good, so I'm going to turn over to the children. Dave is the host for today. Morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, happy sir. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Before we begin, we will now have the prayer by Davia. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for guiding and protecting us. As we, as we go through today, please allow us to learn something new and use it with our daily life. In the name I pray, amen. 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 <laughs> we will now have the music, which will be a recording of Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Whether they are black or white or the precious in his sight, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Whether they are black or white, they are precious in his sight, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus died for all the children, all the children of the world. Whether they are black or white, they are precious in the sun. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. We will now have the Mimi verses. The first one will be done by Brother Micaiah Williams. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Happy Sabbath Micaiah. My final verse is Matthew 10 to 2 verses 37. Did I said unto him, Did I said unto him, you, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Amen. 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 
Amen. The second Amen. one will be done by Josiah Genius. Summer? I'm playing water. Oh. 